I really don't like you. Mate, it's good to be back. Virardi's got a double espresso with him. How are we doing? I hate you so much. No, you don't. You fucking love me. That's why you do this with me. Let's be perfectly honest. I'm here against my will. No, you're not. I am. Really? Yeah, I don't even like comedy. I'm retiring. Okay. You can't retire because we have things to do. We have big plans and they revolve around you. And your ego just needs to take the hit and everything will be all right. I want to start an ice cream van in the winter. Do it. Yeah. I want to change the game. I think, I think there is definitely a market for that. There are people that like ice cream in the cold because they think it's cheaper. I had a friend like that once. Your it's, friend is a flat. <laughs> I hate your friends so much. You don't like any of my friends. I hate everyone today. Uh, why? What is wrong with you? Viraj, here's the thing, right? We had around 80 people at our last show. Mm. I'm a big deal. I don't know why I still should, hang should out we, with you uh, guys. Should we get a round of applause for Miss Yesalada? The smallest little violin. <laughs> I'm like a D-list celebrity now, so I need to stop hanging out with you guys. Okay. Is that be, what you think? That, that, that's it. I, I need to improve. D-list. 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 What are you going to go for? You're going to go for D-list. D-list. I'm at the level now where I'm not invited to the Hollywood parties, but if I show up, there's a 50% chance I might get in. So okay. so how do we get you to C-list? A lot of hard work and dedication. Maybe a couple of blowjobs. You're just prefacing the uh, topic for today. What's the topic for today? No, not November. Oh, you're doing is, it? Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. No, I've already failed. Oh, did you? Yeah, first day. But I think I will do a month. Like, you know how some people do Ramadan and they pick the days? Oh. I'm doing no, not November like that. I pick the days. I'm just going to do it a month. So some days you're not going to have a wank? Yeah, but I'm going to do a month. When you have a wank, do you watch porn? No, not always. I use a memory bank. <laughs> oh, Kai, you dirty bastard. Is that, is that wrong, though, no, to use a memory so. bank? I don't think so. What, you think it's okay? Yeah, why wouldn't it be? I, some people get funny about it. Who gets funny about it? I, well, I don't know because I'm not some people, but I've heard some people get funny about it. Do, okay, so do, do you use a memory bank when you weren't with your girlfriend? Your missus. I'll think about my missus when I'm doing the naughty stuff. But then I'll text her and tell her. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love your missus. Not all the time, She's but every class. now and then. Every now and then I'll just block, by the way. <laughs> Just had some alone time. So you don't, you still jack off. You still wank, even though you have a girlfriend. Yeah, of course I do. Why? We don't live together. Yeah, but why? Because I don't live. We don't live together. Yeah, but you can't. You just like build up the the the, the, the and then like explode when you see her. Literally. What? In the middle of the street? No. Why would you go and do your fun yeah, stuff? Yeah, that's yeah, that yeah, that's a different situation. That's a different situation. So when you know you're getting some, you'll build up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so many questions. I'll load up the soldiers. So many questions. Ooh. You're not the most sexually active guy out there. Not at the moment, no. Back in the day when you were in your younger days. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you load up the soldiers? The cavalry? Then again, because you weren't in a relationship, it was pretty... You never knew when it was going to come, so you just yeah. had to be prepared. You had to be prepared. You didn't want to... And then it go all go too early. You didn't want to let it all go too late. So it was very much like, not once a day, like once every other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there were periods during the depression when it was like three times a day, didn't four you, times a day. Didn't you go like six months without? No, I went, yeah. I went a full eight months without. Having a wank? Yeah. Why did you do that? I was in the right place at the right time. I just, it just felt right more than anything. Yeah. It was perfect. The situation was perfect. There was no external impulses there was no like India's different so oh yeah you're sure you'll see Kendall Jenner on a screen but my mind like like a billboard right right like for Calvin Klein you'll see yeah. Lewis Hamilton for Calvin Klein or whatever it is Tommy yeah. Hilfiger yeah it's Tommy Hilfiger not Calvin Klein um, and you'll see all these Indian models and whatever but I think there's something to be said about being conditioned yeah so my I am attracted to a westernized South Asian girl, not a Indian South Asian girl. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? So also, I am I am attracted to like Caucasian girls. Right. 
which you don't see out there so you have to adapt so it's like your, your mind's constantly trying to find out what you see what it sees as beautiful or what it sees as attractive like you can see beauty in everything the place we're sitting in is beautiful you can see beauty in in women from all over the world men all over the world but like attraction slightly different right you gotta feel attraction and so i think it took me eight months to feel attracted or find someone that i found attractive and most of them were just like you you know the type of individual that they are because india is very like I, you can pretty much tell like most of them just lived in delhi mumbai yeah and there's a certain type of individual that lives there and that's not to say that that everyone does it's like chelsea girls so what you're basically saying girls. is the girls in india didn't motivate you to have a wank is yes. that what you're saying it's kind of fucked up also you couldn't access porn why because the government blocks it the government <laughs> you, have to, you had to use a vpn to do it and i was just is long. that why there's so many indian guys wanking off on chat roulette websites possibly yeah that's their workaround okay the ads the the ads uh revenue that Pornhub or all these other places must get during no nut november sorry the month after no nut november must be insane it must be in like an exploration of semen <sighs> all of it all of the semen why is it white do you think oh, okay what why i don't know the answer to that i could not what answer could i possibly well, give why you isn't it yellow why isn't it blue how could i possibly know the answer to that you're the um, like you're the in-house scientist psychologist oh Mirror. sorry did i get them wrong must be the covid <laughs> i say i literally say whatever i have a problem at home right i go right should we call the uh, in-house psychologist or in-house scientist any everyone says it now when we got anything related to psychology, any relate anything related to science, call Muslim. What am I gonna do for you guys? I can't help. Yeah, I don't know. You just psychoanalyze something and make it seem, say it with conviction, and Sh people just listen to you. Shall we spend the rest of this episode psychoanalyzing you? Shall we go? Go on then. All right. Okay. Can I lie down? I mean, the <laughs> camera won't pick you up, but that'd be cool if we could do that one day. We should, we will do like that. A Freud one. setup. My dad's building a new office, okay. and and. Um, Hopefully he gets these like long sofas in yeah, that yeah. we could lie down in and, and do a whole set. Yeah. So, all right. Let's. What's on your mind? Talk to me about something that you've been thinking about recently, and we'll get to the root as to why you feel like that. I thought that was your girlfriend for a moment. <laughs> it's not. It's just another Moroccan woman. I'm not, I'm not thinking about Khadija. Um, what is on my mind? I was feeling depressed on Saturday like really depressed just about life i am um, i've officially handed in my resignation for my job the job that i very much dislike yeah and didn't want to have a part of since the day i got it but have stuck with it because it allows to fund everything that you see here um and i'm kind of wondering like what how do i get another job how does someone take a chance on me am i good enough am i am i going to be able to to like survive of course, obviously, I'm going to have a whole roof over my head and everything, but it's more of like my ego sort of trying to get through to it that you're going to be all right, you're going to find a job and everything, but at this moment in time, you just need to put your head down and just search for a nine to five as much as you don't want to and as much as it's not what you want to do, it's something that has to be done. Why? Because... I want to be able to sustain my own life. So sustain it. I am. Make it work. Who said you need to do that with a nine to five? This is a perfect opportunity. Congratulations, you put yourself in the deep end. What are you going to do? Wait for the lifeboat? No, there's no choice. I mean, obviously not. There I mean, it's a choice. The, sorry, there's always a choice. When, when it comes to putting myself in the deep end, there is no choice now. Of As in, I can't go back to the job because I've committed to that. I, I'm committing to that. Okay. I've chosen. I've chosen to do that. What are your what are the skills you have developed in the last year? List them. Social media okay. analysis, right. social media content creation, okay. podcasting, cool. videography, uh, operations. Wicked. Um, management. I haven't really done anything business. No, sorry, I haven't done anything like business analyst related. Um, it's kind of like content creation. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, that is where my heart is. So okay, so just freelance that. 
and you probably won't make as much as your nine to five initially, but let's say you make 60%, 70% of what your nine to five made you, it's a start. The issue with it is that like, I feel I'm not qualified. You are. To do certain things. And then you just set a lower price. And then as your skills go up, you set a higher price. What is your hour, what's your time worth at the job you work at? How much are you getting an hour? I think it's £11 pounds an hour. So you're telling me the skills you've developed in the last year of working on One Minute Smoke and your YouTube and your content creation isn't worth £11 pounds an hour. Of course it is. Of course it is, yeah. So why don't you just do that? You could probably charge more an hour. Okay. Just do it. All you got to do- Oh, I'm going to. I'm like, things are, things are in the pipeline of I, can you do this? Can you the people coming to me or yeah, my, so my mum asking people and being like, hey, she wants to do something. There are other individuals yeah. coming up to me and being like, hey, can you help us with this? And I'm like, yeah, I can. It seems like I know what I'm talking about because it's respective, right? Viraj. If they know nothing and I know something, they're like, oh, wow. Viraj, no one knows what they're talking about. I'm aware of this. Not a clue, right? All we do it's just know a little bit more than the people that we're charging and invoicing. Yeah, it's only 30 seconds more. Yeah. If you felt like you knew exactly what you were talking about, that's a sure sign that you have no clue what you're talking about. Because you're appreciating how complicated this is and you're appreciating that there's room to grow. But you are at a level now where you can sell your skills. You think so? Do you really think the average person knows how to work that? You have skills that other people need. They I'm don't know aware how to of use. That. I'm aware of that. You like, have a studio. Take, for instance, we went to a friend's comedy show. And although I didn't get paid in physical cash, I got paid in goodies. So we got a free shisha. And it was at that moment that I realized, like, oh, shit, okay, right. I can, I can actually charge someone something. But at the same time, it was a bit like, well, it's just a standing shot, isn't it? Like, what more, what more do you want? Well, to you, it's just that. But to them, it's golden. True. Can they do that themselves? No. No. Most you can, people... You can make a burger at home, still go out and buy one, don't you? Yeah. Because they can make it a little bit better than you can. So you pay the premium. All you have to do, go home. Here's your homework, since you love setting people homework. Oh, wow, here we That you've go. never met before, you little bastard, right? Go home, set up a fiver, and put stuff you created up there. Okay. You might not get any hits. Most of your hits initially are going to come from connections that you've made. So people you know from social media, family and friends who are hiring you for stuff. Keep building your portfolio and keep selling your skills. Congratulations, right? You've put yourself in the deep end. Now it's time to start swimming, you little bastard. You've already taken a big risk, so why are you suddenly stopping? I don't understand. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. No, but what I'm saying is, so you were going down this path. It, it, it's one sec, not... one sec. So you were going down this path of becoming a banker, yeah? Oh, or whatever you were going to be wanker, like someone disgusting right you're going to become someone gross right but you decide them, you're going to leave that to your brother aka the head of bankroll <laughs> and you're going <laughs> to he's going to love that he's going to absolutely love that and you're going to do your own thing right and you started creating stuff you got a job right you've done that job for about a year now yep 11 months you are so much better than what you were a year ago the first video you made was trash it was right? no offence but it was no it was it was yeah. it was horrible but in a year's time, you're going to look at this and you're going to be like, oh my God, what were you thinking? But you're already at a level now where you can start charging people for what you're offering. So charge them. Got it, boss. Set your price. And that's my price. And remember, yesterday's price isn't necessarily today's price. I'm aware it's of that. It's a Drake quote. So just because you're charging people, I don't know, £30 an hour now, tomorrow that price might be 60 because mm -hmm. you've just leveled up. And it's okay. Just do it. You're not going to make as much money as you did from your nine to five straight away. That's, but that's, that's the interesting bit. Because do it now because you live at home, you're young, you're sexy enough, and it's low risk. Just do it now. You're all, you already started swimming, but right now you haven't gone into the deep end yet. So what? I'm like in that middle area. Well, you, 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 left, you left the shore. You're swimming. Now go into the deep end. It's okay. I'm, I'm scared a little. Yeah, you should be scared, but it's time to take the armbands off. I think you're ready to start freelancing your work. It's not to say I'm not going to stop applying for jobs, because I think that's important. And if a role comes up where a nine to five role comes up and it's interesting, I, I'm not going to say no to it. And yeah. I think that that's important. I've had people come up to me and, and be like, hey, can you help with this creatively? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, it's not entertaining the conversation. It's I'm gonna have the conversation with you. I'm gonna see how far we can get. 
And if I can help, I'll help. And I'll pay for it. And you can pay me for my services. And if not, well, I will pass you on to someone that I think can help you. And that's all right. Mm. I think we met, I met an individual that's going to help us with uh, something that we've got in the pipeline. And building a network of people is also quite important. And I've also been concentrating on that. You do, obviously, a lot of the comedy side of stuff. I do things when it comes to supply chain and operational side of things and building those connections. And yeah, One Minute Smoke is important. I think One Minute Smoke is a collective idea and it's got legs. A lot of people say it's got legs and that's not to say that it does. I think it does. I think there's a broader like, thing here. But at the same time, you have your PhD. I have my podcast and my nine to five and my freelance work. And it's just a bit like, I get up in the nine to five, what am I going to fill my time with? more of the stuff you actually care about agreed agreed and i've been in this weird kind of like not rut creative yeah. it's probably because of your job that you don't like let's say you i don't know how much you make but let's say your job i make i make i can tell you how much i make i make this year i think it was 15k right okay 15 to 15 to 17k okay let's say you make 1200 a month right yeah. you probably don't Actually, if you're on 15k a year, which maybe you do, I don't know. Let's say you make 1,200 pounds a month, right? And now going, you don't get a new job, right? And you focus on these projects, and you end up making 700 pounds a month, mm. right? But you have now reclaimed your happiness. Is and that's 500 pounds worth your happiness? Yes. Sorry, no. Wait. Wait. What is the is it, right answer? Are you willing? <laughs> what is the, are you what willing is the to sacrifice to your happiness for 500 pounds? No, I, no. I don't think anymore. No, you shouldn't be, because it's a good way of looking at it. Actually, yeah. putting a price you've, you've on your happiness. You've quantified it. You have sacrificed your happiness for five hundred quid more a month, mm -hmm. but you don't actually need, because you live at home. Oh, you'd be surprised, man. You don't need it. Okay, sure. What do you I, need it for? I will. I for? will be able to no, to invest crypto. You're 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 sixteen years old, right? You've got plenty of time to make your money. But I like money. For what? Investing purposes and using okay. it to do things in the future. You're 23. That's short-sighted, right? An extra 400 pounds a month to put into your crypto is not worth. I need to right? buy clothes. Your long time. Your clothes are fine, right? You I have. I have the same. But someone came up to me at One Minute Smoke and said, "Do you not own anything else?" I was like, "This has now become a problem." Bloody hell! I wear the same clothes all the time. I'm aware of that because yeah, I video yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. It's okay. I know. I know. I know it's all right. Don't worry about it. Do your own thing, right? And make it work. Make it work. I will. You can make it work. You're bold enough to make it work. Not bold enough. Bold enough. <laughs> that should be on a t-shirt. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll get you one. What, uh, what do you want as a logo? A sketch of your face with the beard. Okay. I'll yeah, get you yeah. it. No sweat. Easy bold man. enough to make it I work. Can, I can actually get that for you. By the next one minute smoke show. Yeah. You can wear it if you want. You're bold enough to make your net worth. <laughs> Ooh, oh. Bars. <laughs> Giving yeah. Drake a run for his money. Yeah. But don't worry, you'll be fine. Don't stress about I'm getting a fine. new job. Do what you're good at. I'm stressed about buying my brother Christmas presents. I'm have to buy him Christmas presents. You don't know? Have you not met Bankroll? Here's what, here's what I think you, all families should do, right? I think presents put to one side my family we don't buy each other presents have you never had a Christmas before yeah when I was a kid but not anymore we don't buy each other presents anymore well, we do secret Santa in mine what we decided a few years ago is we don't need anything from each other as gifts so let's just focus get the kids stuff because they're kids yeah and the rest of us don't have to financially burden ourselves for things that we probably won't use anyway I think that's a cool thing to do and I guess we did it for a while. It was just like we did it through experiences. So there was no physical items. It was like we were away. You get something small like a wallet or something, something that you need. Coming back to the U, because we used to spend a lot of time in Spain before the pandemic. So we do Christmas out there and you couldn't purchase things and then bring them back. It was yeah. always clothes or stuff like that. So that happened. Um, but now it's we do the Secret Santa and everyone gets one person, obviously. I think I like that because I can invest in that person things that they actually require 
I'd rather slash your tires than buy you a present for Christmas. Well, my cat got stolen, so can you purchase me a new cat? Your cat? Yeah. I'll buy you a dog. You're <laughs> funny. This is why you're talking about that. Yeah, I do. These yeah. bastards, right? I, it's really hit me now. Yeah. I've never had anything stolen from me in my yeah, life, yeah. right? And I have, I have a car that means a lot to me, or it does mean a lot to me. Yeah. It was the first car that I ever purchased with my own money. Yeah. Although, like, it, it's, it's had its problems and whatever, right? Should I get the small violin out while you're saying Yeah, yeah please, this? please. And these bastards, <laughs> right? have scoped out my car, come to my house. Your parents' house, but my carry on. parents' house um, that I live in, jacked up my car, four of them, one getaway driver, um, one individual that has the jack, one individual that has the chainsaw, and one individual with a bat, like a baseball bat, and stolen my catalytic converter out of my, what is my pride and joy. In a way, it's my pride and joy. It means a lot. Like, it's got a special place in my heart. And initially I was like, oh, right, this is quite cool. Like, it sounds cool. And then I keep rewatching the footage and it's a bit like, well, this sucks. Someone's taken something away from me. Like, it's worth more than the car itself. Like, it's going to cost me... It, it's going to cost me, like, not an extortionate amount. It's going to cost me a bit of change to, to get it fixed and get it back on the road. And then... Like, could they, do they come back for it? Because they know we've put a new cat in it. Like an easy target. And these guys, they, like, we were in the house. We heard the chainsaw and we didn't do anything about it. And if you do come out, the guy with the baseball bat goes and smashes the other cars. He's like, you need a sniper. Just take them all out. I would have just knocked them out, mate. One punch. It's crazy. Like, they've got no, no regard for anything. And like, but by the time that you wake up in the morning, your cat is probably melted down into the platinum that it is and whatever rare metals. And it's probably like halfway across Europe being sold to some like- and police ain't gonna do anything. German jeweler. No, police don't, can't do anything because it's gone. It's like, you can't see anyone. They've all got masks on and whatever. So- You live on a pretty like public road as well. Yeah, the it's, cheek off, of it. it's, off, uh, it's off an A road, but they didn't come from there. They came from the other side. So we got an estate that lives near us and a lot of the nefarious activities happen to come from there it's like the police are always up up and down there and police are always up and down the the, the 817 yeah it sucks like it sucks okay, but what am i going to do i can't leave it on the drive it has to get it fixed i have to order a tow truck and it's like i don't need this in my birthday month like i wanted to put that money to other other uses shall i um respond how gary v would go on respond in this situation yeah, so your car got stolen? Sorry, man. What was your name? Viraj. And how old are you? 23. That's the best thing that could have happened. That's <laughs> because do you need that car or do you like how you look in that car? I like how I look in that car. Okay, okay. So now that you don't need to pay for that car monthly, it's been taken out your hands against your will, okay? You need to make the most of that opportunity and invest that money. You want social media? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to leverage that. You need to tell your story. You on TikTok? Yep. You need to put four videos out of wink. <laughs> All about how your car got stolen. I love Gary. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, isn't it? That was class. That was class. I think a little bit more high pitched, and you're there. And you're there. Gary V's a G, though. I like man. how he bites his nails when he talks yeah. as well. He talks so quickly. Yeah. He talks so quick. I love Gary. I think he's he serves a great purpose for people, and you you pick and use his content. He's not someone that you you need to always stick with. I think he's got a great message, yeah. and he does a lot for a lot of people. And that's why people rally around him. That's why people buy his buy into his content buy into his stuff i think it's full of shit do you i don't know <laughs> I, I think it's class he gary was the, he was if, in the uk the other week one second i got a message for gary gary if you're listening to this i challenge you right to a to an arm wrestle i don't care how much you're going to conceive and achieve i will beat you in an arm wrestle winner mm -hmm. gets the money in your bank account so if you win you get to keep your money but if i win i get all of it and we'll post it on TikTok. What's the challenge? Arm wrestle. Oh, it's arm wrestle. Arm wrestle. Yeah, arm wrestle. Arm Sorry, wrestle. I was monitoring the audio. Yeah, yeah. You want TikTok? I love that guy. He's class. Oh, there he is. My TikTok doesn't work at the moment. They banned you for sexually explicit content. When you showed those guns. I love doing my weekly reviews. I love it. I think it's so grounding. Just to look back and create like a little video and, and memories. and. Is it 
Yes. I need I need to start writing in my diary again, man. That just sounded like middle class privilege. It yeah. is middle class privilege. We've been through this. You're you're upper class privileged. Mate, I'm I'm part of the I'm man of the people, mate. You know, I don't even have a car anymore. <laughs> I don't even have a car. You really gave it up. Gave up the car. Gave up the Merc. It's gone there. Big G. Yeah, I don't need it, mate. You know, I just want to. It's all about the environment for me. I'm into Lake Britain. <laughs> what happened to them? Did they fall off the face of the earth or something? No, up by about, they're still blocking roads and stuff, man. They're, you know what I pray about in Select Britain? How organised they are, because there's videos of them on TikTok here yeah, where people will lift them out the street and then still sub someone in and then another person will sit down. So you move one and another one comes in. They're cheeky little buggers. Interesting. I have a theory about Insulate Britain and Go these on. climate change movements, right? I bet, yeah, they all have the maddest sexy time at their rallies and their parties. What do you think is like an orgy together. fest? I think so. I genuinely think so. I think these nature people, they really know how to get down. Why? I don't know. I think it's just like part of it. I think they're very open-minded to the sexual stuff. So I think they just have like these orgies. Kind of a bit like a sex cult. Genuinely, that's my theory. Would you be open to going to a sex party? No. Okay. Would you? You would. <laughs> if they I can relate to Joe from you, then yeah, obviously. There's some up in London. Like in Mayfair. There's this girl that goes there goes and reviews not reviews but she tells you about like what goes on inside really that's a whole shtick yeah it's on tiktok <laughs> so she just goes to sex parties no she doesn't go to sex parties she tells you about i've gone what to the a upper sex, class i've gone to a sex party before it started really yeah. what was that like so basically what happened i was doing a comedy show and then someone come downstairs one of the comedians comes and goes oh there, there's a sex party upstairs and i was like have they started no they're just having dinner at the moment so this was dinner before I guess, yeah. So we were just wow. hanging out laughing and they were like, they didn't encourage me to sit, but they were trying to encourage some of the comedians to stay. And they were like, nah, we're good. How hilarious is that? And the age range was shocking. There was like some people there in their like 70s and some people in their 30s. I'm not sure if I could do that. Could you date a woman? Yeah, go on. If she was in her 60s, she was attractive. Who's, now, so like, you're who's in their 60s? Who's, who's in their 60s? Like, give me a name that's in their 60s. And know, Jamila um, Jolie's in her 40s. Sylvester Stallone's wife. She's attractive. She's in her 60s. I guess on paper, yeah. I don't see why it would be a so problem. So you could have a 65-year-old girlfriend? No, yeah, why not? I can give you loads of reasons why not. <laughs> One, it's weird. Two, what on earth are you guys going to talk about? You're the type of guy who could probably connect with a 65-year-old woman. I told to you, honest. on the side, I can walk into a room and just connect with anyone. <laughs> I'm that type of guy. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, I can connect. I'll tell you what, parties will be boring though. At 11 o'clock, sorry, me and Betty need to go. She needs to get her medication <laughs> Mate, I'm, in. I'm getting, I'm getting into bed at 9 o'clock. It's all right. Oh, get up at 4.30. She takes her teeth out to give you a blowjob. <laughs> she puts some on the bedside table and a glass of water. <laughs> you're freaked. You're fucking freaked. <laughs> You'd look past it as well, wouldn't you? You would. Nah, it would be an interesting experience, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> How funny was that couple at the comedy uh, the comedy show the other day? Oh, you, caught, they, you didn't keep catch them in an affair. You caught them moving on, moving on very very quickly. So to explain to people who don't know what we're talking about, so we're at a comedy show somewhere in Hounslow, and there was a couple there in their sixties, and I said, "Are you guys married?" And they just started laughing. I was like, "What's this about, Ben?" <laughs> and she was like. He's not my husband. My husband's at home. This is the new guy. I was like, you need to tell me more. She's like, I'm going through a divorce and this is my new fella. And I was like, so you're going through the divorce. And she's already found the fella. Yeah. And they were holding, it should be fair, fair play to him. They were holding hands. They seemed really happy. Good for them. Dick still works, even at 60. I respect it. Pop a couple of Viagras and you're good to go. <laughs> Have you ever used Viagra? No. Don't need it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I will yeah. do eventually. Yeah. It's natural. Will you ever use it? If I need it, of course I will. I, I don't know. I'm like a little hesitant to use it. Well, what if you can't just get it up when you're... Mate, you're talking big, innit? Because you're, you're young, you don't have to go through this. But if you're in your no, okay, late okay, 40s let's, 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 Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you never been able to get it up? What do they call that? Forget the word. I've had, like, weak boners. Everyone's had a weak boner before. But you've never... Like, have you ever had a moment where it's, like, just not... You've been ready, everything's set to go... And it just doesn't... I think so, yeah. But that's not because of my age. That was probably because of, like, stress or something at the time. Because trust me, I know. Bad diet isn't good for your bone of strength. I looked it up. 
So are you working to, to fix that? No, basically I'm an athlete. So my you just get a haircut fine. and you're all yeah, good to go. Yeah. I read the other day, I thought I was getting fat and then I just realized I just needed a haircut. It was, fine. You, it was your, your haircuts, do you like, yeah. they're goals? I was like, damn, I'm ugly and I'm it's fat. I, like, I just needed a haircut and I was buff again. <laughs> you really are. I'm not, to, I'm not to boost your ego. Oh shit, sorry, I thought we were having a moment. I thought we were going to kiss, sorry. Calm down. I don't want to get in a fight. It really did. I saw you one day with that one, and I saw you the next day with it, and I was I'm like, actually quite a handsome boy you are, when I try. looking lad. I'm just a very... Do you know why? I can't wait till you get a set of groupies. It's going to be hilarious. You know, you know why I got chubby, right? One of the reasons why I got chubby. Because I'm Lockdown. in a loving and caring relationship. My missus accepts me for who I am. When you're single... But when I left you, you weren't in a loving, caring relationship. <laughs> yeah, and I was in prime physical shape. Yeah. So when you get into a relationship and you, you're in with an ama amazing woman <laughs> who accepts you for who you are, you get a little bit comfortable, don't you? She likes my belly as well. She likes to rub it. Is that what you do? Like I think sex? Most, girl, most girls like dad bods. I don't get the fascination with it. I think they just find it warming and comfort comforting. They like a little bit of meat, not like you, all muscular, like Mom, Anthony Joshua yeah. over here. <laughs> These Kenyans <laughs> running there 800 Kenyan meters. Idiots. <laughs> I can't believe you remembered that. But yeah. I put on a bit of timber, granted. I put on 20 kilos, right? You carry around with you a medicine ball, basically. I've, of 20 I've kilos. put on 20 kilos this year, and every single kilo is sexy. Every single one. You've seen photos of you, like, in peak physical form yeah 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 you do look incredible yeah 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 thank you by the way but you have let yourself go no I have, lockdown I have. lockdown you let yourself go yeah yeah natural it was bad but now I can eat more which is nice but why is that nice because it's delicious yeah but yeah mate so you work out yeah right I don't we're at the same level of happiness more or less yeah Okay, if that's what you want to, if that's how you want right. to, I'm all right. I'm all right with it. Like, square it off in your head. I will start exercising again if I can somehow find making exercise fun. But you enjoy boxing. Yeah, but I don't like going to the gym. So I need a boxing partner who I can go spar with. I just want to fight, basically. I don't want to hit the bag. I just want to fight a little bit and do a little bit of bag work. Why don't you just get one at home then? I'd have to put it up. Okay, so you can't. It can't just be a permanent fixture. I'd have to put the bag up, and I don't know how. Because you're not good with your hands. I'm not good with my hands, except when I finger you. We don't do that. We do. We, we don't. do. We Why don't. do you like that? Because I don't know. So we end know. every episode when we turn off the camera. You really got to watch yourself. Genuinely, the people going to be watching this are just thinking like, cancel "Who are me. these guys?" I want guys. a career. Actually, don't cancel me. I, you, you're going to get cancelled one day it's going to be great let's for you. not talk about that because if it did happen someone's going to play this back and we're going to look like idiots if I get cancelled it impacts your life and if you get cancelled it impacts mine yeah so I be got careful. you don't sweat I'm Dana White buddy I manage everything what would you get cancelled for oh don't worry about that mm, I get cancelled for all sorts of things yeah. just my crazy mind when you go down on girls you get a little bit of um, pom pom juice in your beard yeah of you course do. I mean that's just natural don't you yeah. no because yours is huge yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you like giving head? Yeah. I don't get this whole, oh, I don't go down on girls like it makes you special. What's wrong with it? It's natural. It's interesting. Do you not go down on girls? I do. Oh, yeah, good. It's not my favourite thing in the world. Yeah. Your parents are going to listen to this, by the way. <laughs> no, my mum and dad, we're going to cut these bits out. It's all good. Are you actually? No, it's just like, it say. stays in the clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you want to keep it in, if you want to take it out, you just let me know. We'll be like, My parents don't listen to this, but yours probably do. My mum listens to it occasionally. Yeah, it's yeah. not the end of the world. It's only when yeah. you turn it into TikTok clips. Your parents are good parents here. I think so. Yeah. They raised you well. I raised myself. Shout well. out Nishma. Oh, God. If, if she sees this, that's it. That's my life. Big ups. It's her, her ego is just going to go. No, they, they're good parents. Um, Would you, were you a I think project you have, child? Was I a project child? Yeah. Of course. Did I your was, parents regard was, you as a project? I was the first one, so. Yeah, I wasn't. Well, I mean, you were third one in. Yeah, yeah, they didn't give a shit. You just Are you one on. of your parents' favourites? What does that mean? So, parents have favourites, right? All parents say they don't have favourites, but they do, right? No. Who I'm, are your parents' favourites? Uh, no, nah, they, 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 they don't have favourites. Really? 
Yeah. It's interesting. They do. They have favorites for certain things. Right. So okay. The one that is clean versus the one that is messy. My parents the one definitely that has have favorites. An have like a happiness impact on their yeah. life versus the one that doesn't. My parents definitely have favorites, right? So my dad, his favorites are my sisters, right? right? Just likes my sisters, right? My mum is my little brother. So I'm no one's favorite, which is why I'm so amazing. Because I had to fend for myself. I had to go out into streets. I was think you need a therapist. Three years old. You need a therapist. Catch my food and put people in the headlock and say, give me your money. What, like, your, it. like the pigeons in Tottenham? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tottenham scarred you. I am a roadman. An aspiring roadman. Yeah. That's why I'm six foot six. It's because I have to fend for You've myself. You've got to stop telling people. I'm this. six foot six. Prove I'm not six foot six. I can. I'm going to literally How? measure you. Oh, yeah, and it'll say six foot six for us. Right? Will it? Are you just going you know, to make how it tall six are you? Or six? I'm six foot. Okay, so here's your problem with that, right? You have let society tell you that you're six foot. Okay. Right? So you've accepted that. You never try to achieve more. So society tried to tell me that Don't I'm five foot... Don't give me a Gary Vee speech. Society tried Don't to tell me that I'm five foot seven. And I said, no, I'm six foot six. And I believed, I conceived, and I achieved. I could swear you're five six, not five seven. That's misinformation. <laughs> That, I have never heard you rebut something so far. That was I a, remember saying it, saying it to a group of our friends. I was like, Muslim's like, he's, he's five, 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 six. And this voice came out of nowhere and he was like, no, I'm five, seven, five, eight. So the whole propaganda about me being five foot seven was spread to diminish my name. But it's all a massive lie. I'm actually six foot seven. Okay. Trust me. Is that why you're six foot six like two minutes ago? Yeah, I decided to grow. An inch. Do you know why? Because I'd never let anyone hold me down, Viraj. Okay, you're... When are you going to be seven foot? Huh? When are you going to be seven foot? On my 21st birthday. I'm only 19. When is that? In two years You're time. getting old. You're 24 now. I'm 25. Are you? Yeah. What? Yeah. You're 25? Yeah, didn't you know that? I thought you were 24. No, 25. You're lying to me. Pinky. I'm what year were you born? 96. Chase Farm Hospital, June 29th. It was a good day. It's the day the world changed. 96, 97. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're a whole year you older. You need to stop I'm playing sorry. with the table, by the way. I thought you were 24. All this time you thought I was 24. Now I'm 25 years. I looked up years. to you, Mason. I looked up to you, and now you've just... Now that I'm 25, oh. do you think he's pathetic? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Damn. I'm sure a lot of people think that when they watch our shit. Yeah. I am quite pathetic, but in a sexy way. Talk to me about your feelings. What kind of feelings do you want to talk about? Just feelings. Myself. My feelings. Do you get scared of things? And how do you talk about them? Or do you just internalize it? I don't talk about my feelings, Raj. Why is that? Why do you not know how to? I think it stems from my childhood. Okay. Feelings were brushed on one side in my house. Like if you were okay. upset, if I threw a strop, there was no one to... G my mum and dad weren't the type to come give me a cuddle. You, you work that shit on your own. If is, is that why when we were in Brighton last week or two weeks ago, you just got up and left? I didn't throw a strop. I got <laughs> fed up of everyone's nonsense and I went home. <laughs> that would be good throwing a strop. So the way I was brought up, right, it's like people put their feelings to one side to get things done. Okay. Right? And I think that attitude has transferred into my adult life mm -hmm. where when people say nice things to me, I don't know how to... You've seen it. I don't know how to handle it. So, for example, the other day... So we had someone who came to One Minute Smoke who was excited to see me, right? And I ran off. I panicked. They were so nice. They were like, oh my God, it's so nice to meet you. Like, because they've listened to the podcast, uh -huh. they've seen the comedy stuff. And I did a little runner, hid behind for a tree for a bit because I got nervous. I don't know how to handle it. Is that something that you want to work on? Even when my, miss my missus hates it because she'll compliment me and then my I go fuzzy. I'll go, <laughs> like that. Why Why is it not something that you're like actively working on or do you just not want I can't, to? I, I try to, but I, don't, I can't. It's a struggle. You've definitely got better over the years that I've known you. Yeah. For sure. Like 100%. I think the first time I complimented you, you kind of just like stopped talking and had to sit and just yeah. like reset and then come back. But you're able to do it now quite well. It's just like, I don't know. It just kind of sometimes feels like... You'll change the conversation still. I think one of the reasons... I struggle with compliments. Mm -hmm. Is just, let's say someone compliments me for achieving something, mm -hmm. right? Let's say whatever, whatever it may be. It might be a pretty cool thing I've achieved, but I know what my goals are. Okay. 
and it wasn't just that. That was just one part of it. So I don't feel like the compliment they're giving me is warranted. And I find it very cringe, cringy when people over-celebrate their achievements, which there's nothing wrong with it. Go more power to them. I wish I could be more like that. But when I people hear people banging on about this amount, I'm just there like, a bit gross. But what is the reason for that? Like, why? Why do you think it's gross that people are? Because I wasn't brought up small. around that. Okay. I wasn't brought up around that. So it all stems back to your childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like you get well done. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't something you'd bang on about at all, by any means. So you don't really celebrate your small wins at all. Yeah, yeah. My family is terrible at celebrating things. We are terrible. Do you tell them about one minute smoke? Yeah. And what do they say? Yeah, nice. Well done. On to the next one. Yeah. yeah. I think in early stages of stuff like with One Minute Smoke and your comedy career it's got to be like that my family look for tangible things to that assess. said you got your first pro spot and you did it over the weekend yeah that was a big moment I th in my head that was a big moment where well, it was my first pro spot at that particular club yeah yeah. Like, at, and it's a well respected club yeah I think that that's a moment to celebrate and we did we yeah. said well done yeah how did it go ask you how it went we know you don't like compliments um, but I do like to check in and just be like if you do do something I just want to ask you how it went, just so that you realise you've done something cool. Hey, if you want to work on it, work that. on it. If you don't want to work on it, don't work on it. Like, what, what can I, what to, to you, what you just said, yeah. what could I possibly thank say? You. A, That's it. That's all you have to say. Look me in the eyes and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's just make, it's weird. It's weird. Do you not see how weird that is? No. Oh, I don't know. It's just uncomfortable. You know why I don't think it's weird? It's because for so long, I've had compliments, and in a similar way, <laughs> people celebrate whatever let's say let's say life is here and people celebrate life let's see people celebrate your achievements here I want this and so instead of div diverting my eyes and not saying anything and changing conversation like you do just say thank you and like move on I know what when we have something when we, when we need to achieve something and we have something in mind and, and a goal in mind and we don't achieve it but it goes well like one minute smoke for instance People say, oh, they come up after it's like, great show, great show. I'm just like, yeah, thanks. Like, thank you for coming. Da, 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 but da. we know we know what was what missing. Went, what went wrong? I know that it wasn't good enough. Mm. I know there were little bits that need to be ironed out. And yes, you had a great experience, and that's good. But it can be better. Yeah. And until we get to a spot, or I get to a spot, it gets to a spot where the thing that I'm doing is seamless. It's... And it will never be. But if I can get it close to that, and it feels seamless that's when I will accept their, their thank you, their, their, their compliments. But I've just got to a point where it's like, thank you, in and out. Yeah. And I don't mind it. It's like, cool, you had a great experience. I get joy from seeing you be happy. And my standard for that is down there. Yeah. As long as you smile and as long as you genuinely have a good time at the things that we do, it brings you some joy. Cool. Yeah, I, I can relate to that because when someone comes up to me after a set, that I had some particular issues with. And they're like, oh, great set. I'm like, oh, thank you. But in my head, I know it wasn't good enough. How do you like it when people critique you on your sets? It depends if I feel like I'm gaining something from the critique. Okay. If I feel like they're waffling, mm -hmm. then I'm just kind of begging for them to stop talking in my head. But if it's something like, oh, do you know what? They're onto something there then I, I listen keenly. Do you do that for everyone, whether it's just a... Yeah, anyone anyone can have something va value to add, but sometimes people don't, and you're just like, you're waffling right now. But I just let them crack on with it, and I just nod, because I don't like confrontation. Do you like it when I, straight after you've done a set, when I'll be like, that wasn't a good set, or that wasn't your best set? Do you like that? If you've said that, chances are I agree. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah. So we're on the same wavelength when it comes to that. Mm. Although I, I like... I like to point out it was a bad set, but there were good bits of it. You know as a comedian when you've had a bad set, right? Or and just an average set. You know because if you've done it enough times, you have a big enough sample size to know how you feel after each set. Mm -hmm. So if you've had a fucking amazing set, you know what that feels like. If you have an average set, you know how that feels. And that's applicable for anything. Like As long as you, the more times you do something, the same thing over and over and over again, you know if it's gone well, you know if it hasn't. 
Like with One Minute Smoke, I know how I feel when it's going well. And at the last show, at the start, oh, it was hard. It, I didn't feel the feeling I get when I'm doing One Minute Smoke, and I didn't get that until towards the end of the first half. And I was like, and now I'm getting that feeling. It's on track now. You got it back on track. You definitely worked your way in, into like hyping up the crowd and everything. Because at the beginning, it was tough. Yeah, there were... Like, it was dire. It was... Uh, it was... It took a bit of work. Oh, by the way, let's talk about that. Right? This is like our open source platform where we can talk about everything. Yep. Right? Disclaimers. Miraj, you're not supposed to call our audience a tough crowd on Instagram. That's like McDonald's. Right? Bit of an extreme example. McDonald's going on examples. Instagram today and saying, everyone who bought a burger today, we didn't really like how you ate them today. But they were a tough crowd. Tomorrow. I was just being honest. Yeah, but that's not the place to be honest. Those are our customers. Look, I did it on my personal account. I those didn't are, do it on those are the story. people who are supporting us. No. I was being honest. No being honesty. honest. Tough crowd. No honesty. It was a tough one. I, I think you can agree with that to begin with. It got better at the end. and Allegedly. <laughs> and we found a sweet spot. Like We've done three shows now. We've found a sweet spot for the amount of comedians. Um, the, the behind the scenes is getting better and better and better. We are getting better judges. With, with, that's all becoming seamless and the lighting and everything. But it was the first one that we've done where from the jump, it was a little bit tough. And I could, I could, I like had to double check with the headphones. I was like, have I got not got the things right? Like, am I not hearing anything? Yeah. The crowd was a little bit tough. And I just yeah. thought, you know what? Let's just put it up there. Is they're a little bit tough. It's all right. You obviously didn't agree with that. You were like, no, it has to be perfect. They have to be perfect. I had to get them there. You did. I got them there in the end. In it the just end. took a little bit of like nudging. Were you wasted on stage? No. You weren't? I was tipsy. I could, this is the first time I could tell. Pete, the problem with when we do our shows, right? People just keep bringing me drinks mm. and insisting I drink it in front of them. So I can't even just be like, oh, oh. and shots as well. Have you done that before? When what? people buy you drinks and you just. I've not, I mean, I'll have a sip and then I'll just leave it somewhere, yeah. Because sometimes like, I still gotta fucking work. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't be up there like, oh, mate, like, that was lovely. Like, you should keep doing. Well, what's this called again? Two minute smoke. Like, I can't, I can't be like that, can I? I need to be in the game, Viraj. It, you have a tougher job than the rest of us because you're on stage. You're dealing with every character that comes up. You've got to manage personalities and you've got to deal with an audience. And I do it amazingly. You do it all right. Phenomenally. Like Me a young on the other hand, behind the scenes, and Ali and uh, David, we don't have to do that. We, we just have to like make sure everything else is going all right. Just make sure everyone's happy. Mm. And if they were like, oh, do you want to buy you a drink? Yeah, sure, why not? Just put it on the table, leave it. If, if that's what needs to be done. Because when we're dealing with the tech, you can't be drunk. No, you can't be. Because it affects everything. Yeah. If you're drunk and you, you're trying to film something, you're like, you can uh, very easily you step on a cable. Yeah. You, an audio spikes and you're like, oh, you, you hit the uh, attenuator. <laughs> And, like, you don't get any sound. It's a fine line you have to play because people need to enjoy themselves. And then afterwards, you can go out and enjoy yourself. Like, this time it didn't because of other reasons. You had work to go to. Ali had stuff to do. I had stuff to do. I was dying. But um, overall, I think it was a good show. It was a good, another, another stepping stone that we can move forward onto, put another good right foot, left foot forward. Imagine where we're going to be in another year, Viraj. Last year, this time, none of this existed. None of it. None of this. There was no one minute smoke. It hadn't even been fathomed a year ago. It wasn't one minute smoke. Did it come to you overnight? Or was it really just an overnight thing? You watched it Kill Tony? In, and... It happened in Royal Holloway Library. I was watching really? Kill Tony, waiting for my missus to finish up something. And I was like, there's an idea here. And then I called Ali immediately and pitched the idea to him and he said, that, that would work. I've been looking at other comedy shows, like just going through their Instagrams. I don't see anyone that does what we do. No, they don't. There are other people that do something similar in terms of the setup and the video and whatever. We're but in a league of our own. We are. But I think that we've still got a lot wrong, long way to go. We're trying to be like a UFC version of comedy. Mm. Dana, if you've got any tips for us, I'm right here. Just um, take me under your wing. Love to meet you. Um, we're going to meet a lot of people along the way. We're going to do a lot of good things. It's going to be beautiful. And on that note, I think that's a nice way to end and it. And on that note, it's time to end the show. What, what are we on? 49? On our traditional 50 right. minute. 
we we need to engage people to we need to tell them to come to the YouTube channel to like and subscribe so that we can grow a follower base on YouTube. Okay. Right. Please. Right. When's okay. the one, when the when's the next one minute smoke show? January. Please. Okay. Listen here, you dirty little people, right? One minute smoke. Like and subscribe. There's gonna be a lot of content coming out from the live shows that none of you guys have seen yet unless you come to the show. It is a madness. It's possibly the best show in London right now. Maybe even in the world. We don't know yet. We'll find out once we post it. Come to the shows, listen to the podcast, like and subscribe, tell forty seven of your closest friends. Oh, Respect your mum. Enjoy yourselves. See you next week. Oh, and we apologize for, for last week and not doing a show, not doing a podcast. No one cares. Because I was dying and Musin doesn't know how to use tech. So, yeah. Love you. Bye-bye. I need a wee so badly, Virachi. <laughs>